Hello there guys and welcome back to another maths video. In this video we're taking a look at the value of the natural log of minus 1. So I guess the first thing that we need to say and mention is that well why is this a difficult problem? Well the natural log of minus 1 if you don't use complex numbers is not defined. It is it's just not a value for it. If you take a look at the graph for y equals the natural log of x if this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis and this is zero the graph looks something like this um, and that kind of just goes on of course to infinity and it kind of plateaus goes across like this uh, forever but where is x equal to minus one well it's like here this is when x is minus one so what's the value of it well you say well, it doesn't even it's not even on the graph because this down here this just goes down and down and down and this actually becomes an asymptote uh, with zero. So you can't have the natural log of zero at all. The natural log of zero is totally undefined even with complex numbers. But what we can do is we can actually use complex numbers to find the natural log of minus one and it's not going to be a real number. It's going to be an imaginary or a complex number and it's quite an interesting thing of how we get to it. Uh, so that, yeah, this is an interesting problem, but it's not just the natural log of minus 1. Doing this will let us find the natural log of minus 2, minus 3, minus 2.5, uh, any negative number that you want. So you can find the natural log of anything, as long as it's not 0. The natural log of 0 is totally undefined, even for complex numbers. So let's get straight into this. One formula that we must know, um, and I will do uh, more videos on this in the future, is um, Euler's formula, which states that e to the i theta is identical to cos theta plus i times sine theta. This is a very famous formula. It's called Euler's formula, Euler's identity, uh, however you want to say it. So why do we need this? Well, um, this we can actually, if we let theta, because theta is an angle um, in radians as well, if we let theta be the angle pi, which is in, in radians, that's pi radians, which is the same thing as 180 degrees. That ends up with, we get e to the power of i theta, oh, sorry, e to the power of i pi is equal to cos of pi, which is minus one, try on a calculator if you want, plus i times sine of pi, but sine of pi is zero because it's sine of 180 degrees. Again, you can try on a calculator, it's gonna be zero. So it's i times zero. So we end up with literally just e to the i pi equals minus 1. And that's actually what that's what we need. Because what we've got right now is we're looking at the natural log of minus 1. So we can say that the natural log of minus 1 is therefore equal to the natural log of e to the power of i times pi. Because minus 1 is equal to e to the i pi. So the natural log of minus 1 must be equal to the natural log of e to the i pi because they're the same thing. And what this lets us do now is actually we have a method to evaluate this. Because again, in logarithms, there is this rule that we have, which is called the power rule, which states that if you have a, the, you know, any log, doesn't matter what the base is, could be base 10, base 2, base e, which is what we're using right now. This is the natural log, um, which is the same thing as log base e. We're taking the natural log of e to the power of i pi. Using normal log rules, we know that this right here, the i pi, that's a power. And we can actually use the power rule to bring that guy down. So we can say that this is equal to i pi multiplied by the natural log of e. So we've moved the power i pi down to the front using multiplication. This is a log rule. We can, we can do this. But hold on. What is the natural log of e? What is this thing here? The log base e of e, again, on the calculator, you can try it if you'd like to, this is just equal to 1. The natural log of e is equal to 1. What number do you need to raise e to the power of to make the number e? Well, it's going to be 1. So it's i pi times 1, which is just equal to i pi. Now, technically speaking, for uh, slightly more complicated reasons, you have to add on we can say 
uh, 2 pi times k, where k is just some integer, times i. So where k is an element of the integers, just like that, okay? So the reason why we have to add this guy on is because of the uh, Euler's relation, we get the cos theta, sine theta. S for a slightly more complicated reason, we have these functions cos and sine, which we call we say that they're periodic um, with a period of 2 pi, um, which basically just means they repeat themselves every 2 pi radians or 360 degrees, right? We know that, uh, you know, like cos of 360 is the same thing as cos of 0. Cos of 2 pi is the same thing as cos of 0. Um, you know, cos of pi is the same thing as cos of minus pi. But if there is a difference of 2 pi radians or 360 degrees, then cos and sine have the same value which means that we can add integer multiples of 2 pi on to the end, which is where this k comes from. It's an integer, a whole number, could be positive or negative, multiplied by 2 pi. So plus 1 lot of 2 pi, or plus 2 lots of 2 pi, or 3 lots of 2 pi. You get the same number every time. So don't worry too much about the 2 pi ki. Don't worry too much about it. The principal value, the value when k is 0, is just i pi, which is very fascinating to me. So the natural log of minus 1, we can say, the natural log of minus 1 is actually equal to i, where i is the square root of minus 1, times pi. Very strange. And one more thing that we can do with this, you might say, okay, that's brilliant. I now know one thing. I know that the natural log of minus 1 is i pi. We can use this to actually figure out lots of values of natural logs of negative numbers. So, for example, let's have a look at the natural log of minus 2, we can use the same thing. But again, we're going to use a log rule here. The, the natural log of minus 2 is the same thing as the natural log of minus 1 times 2, isn't it? Because minus 2 is minus 1 times 2. They're the same thing. And you can use a log rule here. If you have the product inside the logarithm, you can have the natural log of minus 1 in one logarithm plus the natural log of 2 in the other. So if you have a product, two things times together inside of a logarithm, you can split it into the sum of two logarithms, just like so. But again, we know what the natural log of minus 1 is. It's equal to i pi, or at least the principal value is. And of course, we know what the natural log of 2 is. It's just the natural log of 2. Uh, we don't need to do anything to that. And so we get the natural log of minus 2 is i pi plus the natural log of 2. And so we have this very nice kind of kind of formula, I guess you can say. The natural log of, let's say, minus n, we'll use n, where n is a positive number. Um, it doesn't matter what the number is. Any positive number is simply equal to i pi plus the natural log of n, just like that. So the reason why n has to be, sorry, I've written two. Uh, the reason why n has to be positive is because we want this whole thing to be negative. So minus a positive number is a, is a negative number. If n was a negative number, then we would be getting minus a negative number, which just gives us a positive, and we don't even need to evoke complex numbers whatsoever. So basically, the argument of that logarithm needs to be a negative number, which means n must be positive. So we get i pi plus the natural log of n. We can always evaluate the natural log of any positive number. So this thing here, we know this natural log of n is never going to be a problem. And we just add i pi to it. And again, technically, you can add multiple, uh, you can add integer multiples of uh, 2 pi times i. You can do that. Uh, but this would be the principal value, the main one, the main answer to the natural log of any uh, minus n. So for example, the natural log of minus 3 is i pi plus the natural log of 3, and so on and so forth. Hope you guys found this helpful. I think this is a really cool uh, concept and topic and how you can use complex numbers in logarithms. Thank you guys so much for watching. Highly appreciate it. See you in the next video.